Hi, I'm Kevin Wolomowski, Senior Principal Outbound Product Manager in the Telecom Media and Technology Business Unit at ServiceNow. And today I'd like to go over the telecommunications network inventory features that, that, that have been released for our Xanadu release. Pretty much everything we'll talk about today is currently now available in the product, but if for some reason we talk about something that's uh, future looking, then the safe harbor notice does apply. Please only make purchase decisions based on what is currently generally available in our products. All right, so let's take a look at our TNI Xanadu features. So there are four primary features that have been released with the Xanadu version of TNI. The first we'll talk about is uh, some updates to our circuit visualization capability. Uh, next, we'll talk about some updates that we've made to the planned revisions feature that was introduced in the previous uh, version of TNI. We will then talk about uh, the inventory model and template import export utility, which is a very exciting new feature uh, that's being introduced in TNI. And then we'll wrap it up with a review of the changes that were made in our equipment rack management user interface. So circuit visualization, uh, what we've done is we've added some capabilities to the, uh, the palette where we can uh, show the circuit designs. And in particular, what we've done is we've incorporated the ability to see a a network circuit in it, both its current view and its planned review. So if you have a planned revision on a network circuit, you can show that circuit on this canvas and you can compare and contrast the current version versus the revised version. So just a nice way of uh, giving the ability to kind of do a stare and compare uh, between the two designs. We've also introduced topology as part of the ability to represent in the circuits. So if you could see in the middle of this diagram, there is a, an icon that says Seattle.001. That icon represents a network topology. And so now topologies can be incorporated into visual diagrams of your circuits. And then finally, what we've done is added the ability to identify a protection path for a logical connection. So a lot of network types of connections have primary and secondary or primary and backup paths associated with them. And so in the circuit visualization for TNI Xanadu, we have now introduced the ability to overlay a protection path on a logical connection diagram. The personas uh, affected by this new feature are primarily the inventory agent. That's the main uh, TNI uh, persona. This is the typically the user who will be in there um, viewing circuits uh, and circuit diagrams, comparing uh, diagrams of circuits uh, between each other, uh, also going in and reviewing uh, logical connections that have planned revisions associated with them as well as verifying that protection paths associated with logical connections are visible and, and there for the viewing. All right, let's take a quick look at the video uh, about these changes. In the Xanadu release of TNI, we've added some new features to our network diagram circuit visualization capabilities. Let's take a look. The first thing that you'll notice when we go into our logical connections is this overview tab that we've added. And that overview tab gives us more detailed information about the connection elements in the circuit. So you can see that this particular circuit consists of two connection elements, two logical connections. But what the overview tab shows us is specifically the design information associated with each end of those logical connections. So here's my connection name and my connection end. So on the A side, that's at this Dallas central office hub, gives me my equipment that it's terminating into. If that equipment's in a rack, I have that information there as well. If we just scroll back oh, this way, uh, now I've got my port information associated with each end, the A end and the Z end of these physical connections. And then if there's any additional information like a VLAN ID or an IP address, uh, or certainly the bandwidth associated with these connections, that's all visible in this circuit layout record uh, view. So that's the first thing that we did. The second we did is we created this view connection button, 
which brings you to uh, a, a screen very similar to how we introduced this feature. So this allows you to see the circuits. Uh, if that circuit has underlying connection elements, I can drill into it. Now what you'll notice is that I've got a little clock icon here, and what that tells me is that anytime I see that on a, on a network connection, that tells me that there is a planned revision that is open and active against this. So if I wanted to see that revision, I can click on this revision button down here, and that gives me the ability to toggle between the current view and what the revised view will be. And you can see that these planned changes are showing up in green uh, and, and differentiating themselves from the or current view uh, of, these, of these design elements. So I have that revision view, the ability to toggle between that. I also have uh, a protection path ability. So um, I can take a look at this particular circuit. If this circuit has a protection path that's been identified, um, we've added the ability to create a relationship between logical connections where one is the primary and the other is providing redundancy backup. So in this case, this particular circuit has a protection path associated with it. If I look at that, I can go in here and see that there's my protection path. And this is how it's displayed in the view. So plan revision version two, let's take a look at the new capabilities that we added to this feature. Uh, so we've already talked about a circuit overview page. I covered that on the, on the circuit visualization. Um, and then the circuit revision history. We now allow the ability to keep uh, a history of these revisions. You can keep them for uh, you can keep them archived for up to a year and then you can set it so that uh, you can automatically delete them after that. Uh, and then also the ability to uh, validate whether your revision has changed from what the original version was. So in a lot of cases, you may have uh, engineers who are working on a planned revision. They'll create the clone of it so they can start working on it, but they may not actually get to it for a day or two. And in the meantime, perhaps somebody behind them has come and made some changes to the original version of that. This ability allows the engineer to compare the copy of that version and what they're about to change versus what the original one was. So let's take a look at the persona associated with this. Again, this is the inventory agent. Um, this is the person who is going to be able to see the revision history of a connection. Uh, they're going to be the ones to see the summary of the logical connections and take a look at that circuit layout record that gives the definition of uh, the terminating points, so the actual port positions where those circuits are terminating. And then also the ability to validate a revision against its original to make sure that uh, no uh, unplanned changes had been already made. In the Xanadu release of TNI, we've made some updates to the planned revision feature. Let's take a look at those updates. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go into our change models. We'll navigate to a new one that we've created called planned revision. You'll remember when we introduced this feature, we did not have an out of the box change model for this. We instead instructed users to use the normal change request and then to manually add the tasks associated with revising your CI and operationalizing it. We've now created this out of the box change funnel. So I can open that up, click save, then go to my tasks and see I've got my revised CI task and my operationalized CI task. We've also thrown in an, uh, an additional task as a placeholder to represent perhaps uh, work that would be done uh, through field services management. So uh, a task could be sent to FSM to have a technician actually dispatched to the field to make these changes that are being done in the revision. Uh, so we provide that out of the box for you. It's, it's, um, it's there for you to use if you choose to. Uh, it's not mandatory. So uh, I'm not going to go through the entire process of creating a revision and operationalizing it, but what I will do is show you where some of the new updates have been made. So when I select my revision or when I select my CI that I want to be revised, I can see that it is gone and it's created uh, my up my updated version. It's created a clone of that CI that I will then make all my changes to. But if we reload this form, 
what you will see is we've got a new UI button here, a UI action button called validate revision. And the purpose of this is in, in an operational uh, environment, uh, it's possible that an engineer will create a revision of a CI and they may be working on it for a day or two before they operationalize those changes. And unbeknownst to them, someone could make a change to the original CI. So in order to identify if somebody has changed the CI that you're working on, we've created this ability to, as you put this in, select this validate revision. If there are no changes that have been made, it will say successful. If there are changes that have been made to the underlying, uh, to the original CI, then you'll get a notice that there were changes made uh, and then instruct you to, to review those changes before you proceed. Uh, you can proceed and your changes will overwrite the changes that were made to the original, uh, but we're at least flagging the fact that there have been changes made so that you can go remediate that if you need to. So I've gone in and I've made a change to my revision. What I've done is I've gone and I've changed the bandwidth from 10 gigabits to 1 gigabit. So if we look at our original, you'll see that the bandwidth on our original without the V1 is showing 10 gig. And if we look at our revision, you'll see that that bandwidth has now been changed. I'll save those changes. And I will operationalize those changes and be right back. So I have opera operationalized my changes. I have saved that. And you can see that on my activity, um, you can see that my version 1 has been decommissioned. So if we go look at... Um, We'll go look at our version one, we'll reload that form, and we'll see that now this uh, life cycle stage is now end of life and the status is retired. And if we look at our original, and we reload that form, you'll see that the change has been made uh, <clears throat> from 10 gig, 10 gig to one gigabits on the bandwidth. So in addition to the validate revision, we've also added a system property uh, related, to valid, uh, related to planned revisions. So I've navigated to the, team, uh, to the system properties and I wanna look for uh, network inventory core. And then when we see the system properties associated with network inventory core, you will see that we have an, uh, a revision val ignore fields for logical connections. So when we open that, what, you will, what you'll find is the ability to add fields associated with your logical connections in this case that you do not want compared between the original and the clone CI. There may be fields that you expect to be different, like the revision version um, or the bandwidth, or could be any of the characteristics. Any fields in that form that you expect to be different and you don't want called out on that validate revision, this property allows you to add those fields uh, to this system property setting. And then those fields will be ignored when you um, when you validate your revision. So we've also created an archive rule associated with planned revisions. So let's go take a look at that. If we go to archive rules. And we'll type inventory revision. We'll see that there is an inventory revision history archival rule that has now been created. And when you click on that, you'll see that there's already a condition set here. And this is basically saying to go ahead and for any planned revisions, uh, archive those revisions for, uh, for up to a year. Uh, and then you can also have a setting in here that says, you know, after, after one year, automatically delete them as well. And then finally, if we go back into uh, Network Inventory Workspace, let's take a look at that logical connection that we made some changes to. And we can go and we can see that there is an inventory revision history related list tab that's now been provided. We can click on that. We can see uh, each of the changes that have been made. We can drill into those changes to see um, not only what was changed, but um, 
you can see the, the payloads associated with um, the changes that were made that were um, sent to the original as well as what that payload looked like from when you cloned it. So you have full uh, traceability of what was changed through each revision on a CI and that's uh, attached to that CI uh, on a related list. So that's an overview of the changes that we've included in the plan revision capabilities for TNI Xanadu. Thank you very much. Next up, let's talk about the inventory model and template import and export utility that is now introduced with the TNI Xanadu version. Uh, exciting, uh, exciting events happening here. Um, so in TNI, uh, previously, in order to create equipment models and templates, that had to be done through the UI. Um, for some devices, particularly uh, highly complex devices, the process was a little confusing and a little onerous, um, to be honest. So what we've done is we've uh, taken the feedback on that and we've created a, a more familiar paradigm, um, perhaps a spreadsheet-based paradigm, where a user can capture the information that's required in a spreadsheet template that we provide uh, and then have that imported uh, into an instance, and then also the ability to export your models and templates so that you could move them around to other instances. The affected personas here, there are two. Uh, the catalog manager, certainly, that's the person um, that is going to be responsible for uh, importing the models and also the model relationships. Um, they're also uh, typically the ones that are gonna be moving model data from one instance to another. And then, of course, the template manager. The template manager is going to be importing templates and related templates from external uh, sources, and then also moving those templates uh, from ins one instance to another. Let's take a look at the feature. In the Xanadu release of TNI, we have introduced a new way of equipment model and equipment template management. Let's take a look at how we originally deal with equipment models and templates. The process to create equipment models in TNI is basically that you have to create a model of the device and then a model of the slot of each type of slot that that device has, and then a model for the types of cards that occupy those slots, and then the models for the network interfaces associated with those cards. And for some, complex equipment. This process was confusing um, and a little frustrating sometimes. So what we've done is introduced a, a familiar paradigm to this, and that is the ability to create these models and their relationships in, an, in a spreadsheet format, and then upload that spreadsheet into TNI and have these models and their, cor uh, and their corresponding templates automatically created. So let's take a look at how we do that. First thing that we did was we introduced uh, a couple new capabilities on the uh, menu here. And uh, one of them is import models and the other is import templates. So in order to access these, uh, you need to be the persona inventory catalog manager or inventory template manager. But essentially they would come here and uh, if you want to import a model, uh, this is where that would be done. Uh, basically you just click new now, if you don't have the spreadsheet already filled out, uh, you can create this create uh, click this create Excel template. That's going to create a a file. So we'll go open that file up, and then you'll see that in this file you've got this essentially the representation of this. In this case, this is an ASR one thousand one. So this is this is a file that we've provided out of the box that provides kind of a guide to how to go ahead and, and fill this in and use this to create your own models. So you can see from the top here, here's my equipment model class is network equipment. Uh, I've got this entity ID here, and then this entity ID will be used as, as part of how the system reads this file. So EQ-1 would uh, basically align with the actual chassis, and then you've got uh, SL1, SL, two, three, four, five, and each of those is aligned with a slot or the slot model associated with this device. Same with the cards and same with the interfaces. 
and then the counts associated with them. You, you would stipulate those in the spreadsheet as well. This is the bare, uh, bare minimum information that you need to create these, uh, these models. But if you look across the top here, you'll see that there are other attributes that if you have, you can fill these in as well, and it will be a more complete template when you, uh, when you go into TNI. So in our situation here, just for demonstration purposes, let's just say that we're going to create a new equipment model for an ASR 6001. So I'm going to um, do a replace. So ASR 1001 with ASR 6001. And so now we've gone ahead and made those changes. All right, and if I save that, and then we can go back into TNI. Now I can go ahead and attach that file. So this will be ASR 6001 model. Attach our file. And then we will import it. So this is going to give you a status as it's going. It's uh, going through, it's transforming, it's loading, loading different records. And you can see that it is now complete. So we'll just refresh the screen. And you can see that of that spreadsheet, uh, a total number of 40 records uh, were uh, inserted. Um, or, or provided of those 40, 34 were inserted and six were ignored. So if we look at, let's go look at our list of equipment models. You could see that now we've got an ASR 6001 model. And when we create that, it creates it just as you would have done manually through the UI. It's created all the network model relationships. It's created all of those subtending child product models, and of course, made those relationships. So that is a quick overview of the equipment model and template uh, capabilities that we've added to the TNI Xanadu release. Thank you very much. Okay, and before moving on this, I just wanted to um, make one comment on the the example that I gave, where I took a spreadsheet um, associated with an ASR, a different version of that ASR, and I changed. I just did a replace on the name ASR one thousand one to six thousand one. Obviously, in that particular use case, uh, I'm I'm saying that none of the slot card port configurations will be different. Obviously, if you're if you're using that sample template to create a totally different device, then you'll need to make sure that you that you update it accordingly, and that you add the the new models um, for each of the rows where you need to. Um, that just changing the name won't necessarily um, change everything underneath it for you. All right, and then wrapping up this overview of the TNI Xanadu features. Uh, is our Equipment Rack Management UI version 2. Uh, so exciting changes that have been introduced on our Rack Management UI, specifically the ability to edit the rack. So now you can click on an Edit button, and then the ability to drag new equipment into that rack, um, move equipment within the rack, uh, or reserve rack unit spaces, uh, or just remove equipment from the rack totally. Uh, we've also added some power and weight KPI information. Um, and uh, created the ability to to add equipment into that rack right from the rack view. So let's uh, take a look at the personas associated with this. This is, again, the network inventory agent. Uh, this is the person who's going to be viewing those power and weight requirements. Uh, they'll be looking at um, the rack configuration, figuring out what equipment needs to be there, what needs to be removed, um, and also if any rack units need to be reserved, uh, this persona will be doing that as well. So let's take a look at, the, at this feature. In the Xanadu version of TNI, we've made some updates to the equipment rack visualization. So let's go take a look and see what we did. 
So I'm going to go look at a new equipment rack here. And what you'll notice right away is that uh, we've added a couple different uh, metrics along the side here. So in addition to the metrics associated with the rack unit availability and how many contiguous available rack units there are in the rack, we've also added a metric for allocated power in the rack as well as the bearable weight of the rack. We've also now allowed users to edit uh, right from the rack. So when we go and we click the edit button, we will now go into edit mode. And then you'll see that you have uh, a list of equipment that's available to you. So if an engineer wants to go install new equipment in a rack, uh, they can do so right from the rack drawing right here. And there's a couple different ways to do that. The first would be uh, to click on the device that you want to add and then click add to the rack and then you'll be presented a little screen that allows you to choose where that equipment can go in the rack based on how many rack units it has and how many available contiguous rack units there are in the rack. So you can go ahead and figure out, put it in through one rack units, one through five, and then you'll see that we've got new new equipment here. You'll also see that when we make changes to the rack, what we're looking at here is uh, two versions of the front. There's the current existing version of that rack. And then as you edit that rack, now you're seeing the changes that have been made. So you have a, a before and after look to see how you're doing uh, and what you're doing in the rack. The other way of moving equipment into the rack uh, is to just go ahead and grab it and bring it over onto the rack. And then you can see as I hover over where it can go, it shows where it could be installed. So those are the changes that we've made to the rack visualization in Xanadu version of TNI. Thank you very much. And just wrapping up this video, one thing I also wanted to mention is that uh, when you make changes to that rack and then you click Save Changes, that will automatically create a change request and that change request will have change tasks associated with each individual change you made in that rack. And that wraps up our TNI Xanadu release overview. Thank you very much.